and welcome everybody back to another edition of Total Sport Live. My name is Yannick Kuntal and we are here once again um, interviewing athletes uh, with more focus on the Olympics uh, or for the upcoming Olympics. And this tonight we have Sherelle Thompson, our 50 meter freestyle swimmer. She'll be introducing she'll be introducing ourselves to her as well as talking about her journey leading up to uh Tokyo the Tokyo Olympics as well as you know just to have a little conversation with her about her upcoming um, about the upcoming Olympics. So we're just gonna be waiting until Sherelle is live with us, um until she's in your room and we will get to her shortly. Alright. So Sherelle uh, oh, I'll see her in the, in the in the lobby. Actually, welcome, Sherelle. We anx we are anxiously waiting to you to send your request, and we will be having this interview up and running. All right. So we have some other fellow Olympians as well. Good evening to Tyra Gittins. Shout out Tyra, doing lovely in the long jump as well as the heptathlon. Uh, throughout the season. See Leela Nacho is there as well, Shannon De Cannon. And joining us live, Sherelle Thompson. Welcome to the program, Sherelle. How are you doing? Hi, good evening, good evening. How are you doing? And we are doing fine, thank you very much. How is, are you in Japan right now, actually? No, no, I'm still in Florida. This is where I'm based for the last few months training. So I am actually, um, this is my last 48 mm -hmm. hours. I have to finish up my packing and get ready to head over. Good, good, good. That's, uh, that's fantastic. So tell, just for those who may not know uh, Sherelle Thompson, why don't you just give us a little quick introduction to yourself? Well, I am Cheryl Thompson. I will be representing Trinidad and Tobago at the Tokyo Olympic Games this August, um, the end of the month. And I am a person that is passionate about sport, about food, about life. Um, I am a believer in Jesus Christ and I have... Uh, wild um, and eventful journey these last four years that I've been um, really blessed and grateful to be a part of, to be on this journey, to be on the path that I'm on. Right, so we covered, so we have your summary interest there. We have food, we have Jesus Christ, a oh, host of others. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to make sure we're going to cover all those topics uh, within the span of 30 to 45 minutes, right? But let's start with... Um, how you first got into swimming? Who really, um, what really got you into swimming? And what made you, you know, think that the, that the Olympics was a, a, a real um, goal for you? Uh, well, um, I had my start in kindergarten. That's when I was first introduced to the water. I just loved being in the water. And um, like I said, I love sports. So when I was um, around 10 or so, and... I was um, also into gymnastics. I tried volleyball, different sports, but it was the encouragement of a coach in um, Virginia. I was on a family vacation. We had done, uh, I had done a summer program there and they strongly encouraged my parents to get me into a competitive program to, because they saw that I had some, some talent and said that um, I could do well in the sport. But for me, where um, Olympics really began, began to, um, well, the, the idea of going to the Olympics so sparked for me was at, on two occasions, firstly, when I met George Bavel. Um, again, I was probably, I was under 12, somewhere between 10 and 12 years old, and George was still training in Trinidad. He was with Andrew Roberts at the time. And... Um, just knowing that he was going to the Olympic Games and being able to be in the same pool with him and observe like his focus and drive, that was like my first inkling of Olympics. Okay. <laughs> and and um, years later, after meeting my now big sister, Chantal McLean, that was really where um, things took a different turn for me. I remember 
running downstairs really early. Um, it would have been 2008. Can't remember how that was at that time. But knowing I had met her a, a couple of years before at an, uh, at um, Pan Am Games in 2007, and knowing that she was going to represent Trinidad and Tobago at the Olympic Games. I was just so excited and so inspired by her. And I remember waking up early to look at her swim. And after seeing her perform on that um, grand stage, it was just really the moment for me that I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do that as well. So it's been a journey since. <laughs> uh, so let's um, talk about quick. George Bovell, right? So he mm -hmm. was, out, so would you say that he was the guy that really, you know, as you saw him, he was like, well, not really to say, well, this dream, this, this swimming dream is going to be a thing, right? But like seeing George Bovell, you know, former Olympian, he won the bronze medal back in 2004. You know, that, what was that like? Just see it, like just being around him and, um, you know, just soaking all that in. Right. At that age, I was still very, very young. Not, no, no, no thoughts of maturity in this sport. For me, I was still learning techniques of different strokes. And um, the one thing that stood out to me was just his, um, the presence that he brought to the pool. He was very focused, hardworking. And when George was around, um, everybody, everybody took on a new a new vibe. The, he, he, he had a vibe that um, just permeated the entire, the entire pool deck. And I had never, I had not interacted with him at that point. Mm -hmm. um, the last few years I have been more closely interacting with him, which has been really great. But at that time, um, it was just observation from afar that began to um, just open my eyes to what performance and training at an elite level was like. So looking at, um, in terms of the, your event, your, the 50 meter event, right? Uh, what would you say is the most important part? Because that's a sprint. It's not like the 100 meters, you could just go forward and back or a longer distance, like 400 meters. So what's like the key um, thing for you when it comes to, you know, having a good uh, swim time in the 50 meters? Uh, it all comes down to just the the execution of of the of all the pieces mm -hmm. um, there's no room for for mistake any in the 50 meter and um it's so exhilarating from the go of the buzzer everything just has to come together perfectly so for me i focus a whole lot on my technique my efficiency and then just relaxing into the speed if that makes sense Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that my body is strong, it is well trained, well prepared, and just like an um, a well oiled engine, just ready to go. So, right. And what about um, like, all right. So the takeoff into the pool, right? Is it, um, uh, is it that um, what's the key there in terms of it? Do you try to gain as much distance under the water as much as you can when you dive, or is it as simple as you know, diving, resurfacing, and, you know, just get, just, just getting into the flow of it until you reach the end? Well, I mean, from the get-go, you want to be the first off the block. Mm -hmm. So, um, it is, the goal is to get into the water as fast as possible with um, the least drag. So, efficiency is the key in getting in very sleek and, um, and very explosive. So, carrying that speed and power from the block into the pool and transitioning into the underwater kicks. Um, that's the beginning of the relaxation into the speed that mm -hmm. I was talking about as well. Right. Uh, just a quick thing. Uh, for those who like to ask questions, uh, ask Cheryl, Cheryl Thompson any questions, um, you can always post this in the chat box and we'll try to get to as many of them you know, during our interview here. Um, also, so back to, the, back to swimming, right. um, the reaction time, right? How do you go about practicing it so because you have to be uh, as soon as that gun goes off you have to be the first in the water quick so how do you actually train um the react the, that re that reaction aspect to your to your swims um whenever i have the opportunity and it's in the workout to do um a practice start or even from a push-off like once i'm 
sometimes I request getting being started as opposed to just looking at the clock and going on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but when I am going to practice reacting to that go or that signal, I put on invisible blinders as it were and just get um, focused to cancel out every other sound and listen and tune in just to the sound of that whistle or that buzz or whatever it is we're using to practice on that day. And another thing I also remember, um, a really fun game that I liked, I hadn't done it recently, but when I did a lot at college was a reaction game with cups and you bend over with a partner with a cup and mm -hmm. equal to any both of you and at the reaction of the at the sound of the whistle or the go whatever it is the first person to grab that cup is um has the quickest reaction so that's a fun one that um i like to play as well um in training do you also get like maybe some false whistles so like you're listening for the correct so let me say no this is just me thinking about maybe somebody training aspects that go into that particular partner. So do you have like maybe somebody saying not like a little false whistles to tell you, okay, this is not the one or, you know, and then you listen to the right one to say, oh, go. I haven't, I haven't done that. Um, mm. At the, at the highest level, I mean, at, at competition, we, we, it's a standard thing. Like, you know, what the sound of the buzzer is. Um, so no, I can't say I've practiced. Okay, this. I just I just say you now. You know you don't know if it have well, well now nah, I wouldn't have any. It, it don't have any spectators in the twenty in the um in the Olympics this year. But I was just thinking maybe if I have somebody trying to set all the swimmers off now, make it a yeah. false start or something like that now. But that's they just that's just start, a thought from me. They won't start the race unless there is um adequate amounts of silence because right, they won't right. hear us as athletes. Right. Um, everybody needs to be able to hear the sound of the start. Right, so they right. for the start, please. And then right. and I Absolute have the silence. preparation. I know that that is part of um, my routine. Like when I got onto the block, I know that what I'm listening to, what I'm listening for is the sound of that start of saying, take your mark. Mm -hmm. I about it. It's just exciting because the adrenaline starts to, to rush. So how does that feel though? Like, just having like that moment of silence before yeah. going in, before hit, before that competition starts. Well, what do you, what, what goes through your mind at that point? Ah, well, um, deep breaths, just like I just did. I stand on the block and I look to the end of the pool to the finish line. That's mm. that's my goal. I goal, could, right? And um, reaching to the to the end of that um, pool in one stroke, and. Once that last whistle is blown before the starter says, take your mark, it's um, nothing else matters but, but that, the sound of the starter. And there's butterflies in my stomach, but I know now that that is a reminder that I'm ready. My body is ready to go. Revan and Jens are Revan ready to go. And um, once he says, take your mark, he or she says, take your mark, I bend over and hold that block. I'm just ready to be released. Right. Let's take a little break from um, the swimming for a second. Well, we're still on swimming, mm -hmm. but not like Olympics. Um, okay. Growing up, um, you obviously go to, you'll be in school and whatnot. Uh, what school did you go to? Did it, was it, in, it was in Trinidad, right? There's more opportunity to shout out in the schools. Yeah, so you go ahead. <laughs> I have a kindergarten. Shout out to everybody that went to OB kindergartens and then to St. Gabriel's Girls RC. Oh boy, I'm so T. That's what you're talking about. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> then I'm country for um for secondary school. I went to St. Stephen's College. Shout out to everybody mm -hmm, else mm -hmm. who's went to St. Stephen's. And then college. I went to the University of Tennessee. Ah, the Mount. No, not the Mounties, the Volunteers, yes, yes. The Vols, yes, go Lady Vols, <laughs> go Vols. <laughs> and um, lastly, I'm currently enrolled in um, the University of the West Indies. So right, right. So going through... Think... Right, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, the chat, the chat going crazy right now. Shine, they can't say, make sure you have, make sure you list all your schools. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> right, so in any of these... um. In any of these, well, 
going up through schools, obviously you'll be going through like maybe some school meets, going through um, um, different different swim meets and things throughout the country. What was the competition like um, growing up, um, just growing up overall? Oh, that's where that's where the fun of competition began. I mean, mm. shout out to um, to at the time it was TSTT, V Mobile, Milo, the main sponsors of the secondary school, um, and primary school swim meets. That is where. Um, the love and, and enjoyment for competition, uh, friendly rivalry, all began because from primary school to secondary school, I would have been racing um, some of the same group of girls, some of them who were swimming competitively in the same club with me. And then, um, so it would be on a weekend while my classmates are at home relaxing, either doing homework or something. We are the pool competing, enjoying ourselves, taking in the hot sun, um, racing. And it was at that stage we started winning medals and um, getting trophies. You know, just starting to see the the reward for our um, for our work that we do in the pool. So it was it was some proud and fun fun memories created at um center of excellence is where most of them were held that we would have done secondary and um and primary school swim meets shannon also said don't forget you can't forget your short time at convent huh? i went forget convent. <laughs> all of a few months <laughs> <laughs> um jayu 868 wants to know who was your best co- your best competitor um in high school i would think so maybe growing up growing up in uh, primary secondary school who was who would you say was your closest competitor? Your Ooh, best one? Broke Rage and Chen, shout out to her. She was always like afraid <laughs> when we were younger. She was like, oh my gosh, she was a little younger than I am. And mm. um, she was a really great breaststroker. And um, we, herself and um, Khadija, Khadija Phillip, we used to all train together. And then in the freestyle and butterfly, um, Brittany Stewart. Brittany Stewart, she was around the same age group as me. And then when I met Chantal McLean, we, well, we were never able to compete in high school. So I'd have to say Brittany Stewart and um, Khadija Phillip, the whole crew from Stingray Swim Club and then Blue Dolphins. And uh, also uh, when you're swimming for the balls, Mm -hmm. um, that's Trinidad is, a small island, but when you're swimming collegiately, that's you're going up against some of the biggest, some of the best swimmers in the in the United States, and you know how much people there in the United States. So, what is the competition like um, swimming for swimming in, in the uh, in the NCAA? Right. Well, let me tell you, that was the beginning of um, some real growth for me. Mm-hmm. Moving. From Trinidad, just like you said, we are a small island and um, we're more, very um, familiar with our competition throughout over the, um, over the years. But moving to the United States was um, firstly a shock to know that to see, to see the, the wealth of talent and mm-hmm. how competitive the sport is at the collegiate level. So it took a lot for me to um make it firstly to being um among the athletes that represented the university at Southeastern Conference and then to NCAAs and then to be able to compete around among the best in the nation at NCAA. Mm-hmm. That was an incredible experience. And um one of my best times or one of my best performances I had done was on a relay with with um, Lady Balls in the 200 freestyle really and I had swam a 21 second freestyle that was so exhilarating but for me it was just uh, um, a testimony of being able to work hard and make small um, to make incremental um, steps making progress along mm-hmm. the because I started off actually injured. I started off with a, with shoulder surgery. So mm. being counted out by maybe some of my um, my teammates and coaches 
at the beginning, but I was consistent and diligent in my efforts at practice and paid attention, like I said, to technique, which is a huge thing for me. And the improvement and the hard work really paid off over the, the few years. And then to be able to graduate from college with um, All-American and Southeastern um, Championship titles to my name, that is, it was an incredible journey. Oh, that, that is an impressive CV. And we even, we even reached the Olympics yet. So Lola, <laughs> that, um, that's just really amazing um, as well. Uh, you, 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 talked up, you touched on the, the shoulder injury that you have. What was the rehabilitation like um, going, through that, going through that injury? How, how, how did you sustain such an injury? And what was the rehabilitation yeah, period I, for you? I underwent two shoulder surgeries in my career so far. Um, and they were both to my right shoulder. I had, um, in my late teens, some nagging shoulder pain that prevented me from consistently... Um, training and this was leading up to the 2012 Olympics like I said it was after 2008 that I first started um, looking at Olympic times and really working towards it mm -hmm. and um, so 2012 was out as I that's the year that I did my first shoulder surgery and what the MRI revealed was that I had a torn labrum mm -hmm. and my bicep was detached from the head of the shoulder mm -hmm. and um, so from the onset of my collegiate career, I underwent shoulder surgery, which the surgeon said was the worst they had ever seen. And this was in the U.S. Um, some like really top surgeons in, in Tennessee did the surgery for me. And um, the rehab, it took six to eight months. It took, up, it took eight months of um, starting off with just literally wading in the water, <laughs> like <laughs> big, uh, not being able to move my arm. I remember days going to the cafeteria for lunch with my right arm and I'm right-handed. So I'm eating lunch with my left hand, food falling off my plate because it's <laughs> put my bags properly. And um, we have, it was every day in the training room, working diligently with my um, trainers at Tennessee and just getting back the fine, fine movement, um, stability, strength, keeping that mobility. And little by little, I was able to um, start kicking with my arm extended, like raise my mm -hmm. arm higher, and then started doing strokes. And then, the, then they allowed me to do a certain am amount of mileage per day and per week. And then it, it just progressed and progressed that way. So... When I was finally able to do a like hundred percent effort swim and also to do a full practice, that was like ah, like so, a huge weight coming off your shoulder. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And also, like I said, I was at a university where um, at a Division One school, so competition is high, and I'm just like itching to prove myself, to show, um, to contribute to the team. Mm -hmm. So. That was also really incredible when I was finally able to compete, represent the university, compete at the dual meets, and then to make the um, Southeastern Conference team after that. So to anybody who is injured, working through an injury, whether shoulder, knee, um, you could feel free to reach out. Let me put a plug to my sister who is <laughs> sharing her journey, she's um, really great at documenting it live and, and sharing inside that way. But both of us, I, I think I could speak for her to say that um, it's not an easy road dealing with an injury, but having supportive people around you and also keeping the end goal in mind is what will carry you. To, that's what will remind you um, why why it is you're you're still pushing through this the pain this this challenge this um really seeming seemingly lonely situation when you when you have um a shoulder injury when you have an injury yeah uh, on yeah and that's you know that's a really good that's a really great story uh, mm -hmm. i just want to ask quick i don't want to spend too much time on it because um wh what did that do for you mentally like were you like what was the mental state in that because we you know you have this whole Thing about mental health and whatnot 
making sure that you know that you're right in your right place am I mentally so how did you you know how was the the men did that make you mentally tougher or did that uh how was that experience for you yeah definitely it would have um it was um it was a uh, it took a toll on me mentally because like I said it was a competitive environment that I was in and being there in a new environment my mm -hmm. purpose there was to train and to compete to represent my university and I just have to sit on the sidelines and look at everybody work hard put in the work go um go off to travel meets and I'm left back while while they are out there doing what they were they were here to do mm -hmm. um I spent time working with a sports psychologist at the university and I also talked through things um, with my coach and my um, friends at the time. It, this is what I, what I meant with having a close group of people mm -hmm. who, will mm -hmm. you, who will encourage you, who will rally behind you when, um, when, when things you, look. Yeah, when things don't. Yeah, when things looking oh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was something that I didn't see coming as well because, like I said, I would have been looking at this was my first uh, swing at Olympic Games 2012, and mm -hmm. to have that injury prevent me from being able to even train and put my best effort towards it was a huge um, setback for me, but. Thankfully, I was able to rise above that. And um, I even considered quitting at the time as well. I was like, this is, I don't think I could, I could do this. Mm -hmm. um, but that's when I had people speak into my life and be like, you could do this. This is just one season. It's not going to last forever. And you could, you could get over this. Mm -hmm. so, and look what you are now. You're, you're, you're 48 hours away from the Olympics. So. But the, <laughs> yeah, Mike, I have to say, um, being this, like, that was the first time I, I had considered quitting right. um, when I had that injury. Mm -hmm. And over the years, because I dealt, because I, I faced these challenges, my capacity, my resilience, my strength, um, my drive to to um, deal with obstacles that came afterward right. was that much greater because of what I went through before. If that right. means, because I never saw myself being able to deal with a second surgery, um, um, postponement. Well, right now, I haven't cup. Um, qualified for this Olympic Games. The Games was, was postponed. Right. Um, there were so many other things that came up um, and then injury, like when my shoulder, the other shoulder started giving trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm, I wasn't faced. Right. That I have dealt with this. I have gone this way before and I know that I could, I'm, I can overcome this. So it, it just for me, my, one of the biggest lessons I got from that is the way forward is through the obstacle. Right. Stay with it. Allow it to work in work through you and to, to build something greater within you. Um as opposed to giving up. Yeah, yeah. guys. So you see how important um you know just being the that the mental aspect is, right? We can't we we can never take that for granted, right? And we've seen it throughout sports. Not just recently, but through the past, we have a number of number of athletes come out talking about talking about that struggle with mental health. So yeah. we really can't we really can't take that for 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 granted. And you know, just to see you here today, getting ready for a, a competition like this after all the adversity you went through, you know, it, it really is an inspiration to other to other athletes and just to other people in general who might be going through the same thing, right? Yeah. Let's go, but let's take it a little bit somewhere a little lighter now. You know, I just want to ask, uh, we have another question inside here from uh, Kyron DS. Um, he wants to know, aside from you and your sister, are there any other athletes that are in your family? Are you, is your family an athletic family? And, you know, who, who else participates in sports? Um, 
my uncle participated in he did volleyball mm-hmm. i don't i think it was just like um intramural volleyball when he was at at college my mother did track and field whenever there were sports days mm-hmm. when she was in school i don't think she ever trained like consistently for any sport and i think somebody told me that my grandmother on my father's side was van- was an athletic person mm. like school um secondary school as well so those genes passed down and and my sisters and i actually um put any work to to train for for sports whereas right. my sisters would have just done it um, yeah, they just you know for yeah. recreation, yeah. Yes, yes, we took it to a different level. Yeah, so you guys were the ones that like you know what I could see myself doing something, doing sport, taking it seriously, and have an action, an actual career from it. Yeah. Listen, that was not my that was not my um plan. <laughs> myself where I am today, this is not my plan. I tell people my life is off script since 2016. <laughs> I. My sister, Shannon, who does volleyball, her plan from a young age, she wanted to be a professional athlete, and that is what she set out to do. But um, I am, I'm enjoying the journey nonetheless, and mm-hmm. it's, I'm grateful to be here. Not to, not to be corny or anything, but it sounds like it was God's plan. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Drake. Um, so looking at um, your sister, right? Would you, all right, so let's say swimming doesn't happen. Let's say swimming doesn't happen. Um, do you kind of, do you maybe follow in your sister's footsteps, maybe join her on the volleyball court? Was that ever, like, maybe something you had at the back of, the back of your mind? The, the Thompson sisters went back-to-back going against, going against the world? Was yeah. that ever, like, a talk? I, um, <laughs> I consider that, actually, during my um, first retirement from the sport. Mm. I, when I left swimming, I went, I was... Um, playing football and then volleyball I got into it, got back into it and started going to training consistently with a coach in South. So I um sorry, drink. Yeah, so I did to consider that for a while. Like, you know what, maybe something didn't work out. Let me I could probably do volleyball and I told Shannon I come in for your spot or you know <laughs> and, so, and I started telling other national volleyballers the same thing as well so I um I considered it for a little bit but I didn't quite have um I didn't put in as much time as she did for as long as she did to be able to um to make it to her level I mean I could see it I could see it in a kind of way you would talk about sports being like they kind of transcend each other. You can kind of blend the different skills. I could see like the shoulder work going in from your swimming, going into like serving and spiking for volleyball. So who knows? It might, it, it, it might have happened. It could have happened. Yeah, actually, one of the most challenging things in um, training, training volleyball, I had to retrain my mind on how to jump for, um, to block or mm-hmm. to, or I think it was the spike because the way I approached the block, um, to do a really a really um dive mm-hmm. is different from how you make your two steps before you jump to to spike a ball so that was um really interesting mm-hmm. and you know we always i think it's important that the the kids that grow up you know it's very interesting that they should learn to play you know different sports because you know the skills they translate so something you might something that you have, yeah, your footwork in tennis, you don't know, it could translate to foot it could translate to football. The little agility work that you'd be doing in other sports, it could translate to other sports too. Right? So it's all there, there's always that's it's always a good thing to 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 be able to be proficient in these kind of sports. Because you never know. Something might happen, you might have to switch. Right? Um another thing too, uh back to the swimming a little bit. If you didn't have to do fifty meter swims, um, what would you say was the what was the next um yeah, were mm-hmm. there any other events events that you were interested in doing? Mm-hmm. Um, there's no up from there. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, we need to we need to come out. It's at 25. I've been a sticking right now. How are you do 25? <laughs> the I, <laughs> no, I'm all about the sprint. Um, mm-hmm. I swam 200 butterfly once in my life and felt like I was um, going to see Jesus halfway oh. through. The- <laughs> but um, the 
longest race I probably swam was a 200. Mm. I did um, 1,000 meter swims and 400 meter swims in practice, but 200s was um, about the highest I, I went in swimming. Yeah, so it's just 50 meters for you. Just you need to speed. That's all. Exactly. What I thought you were going to ask, though, is if when swimming was a sport I would do. I have an answer. Let me, uh, let me hear it. Let me hear it. That was the next field. question, actually. Track and field. Field. Mm -hmm. I, I love, I love, um, I love the run as well. Not necessarily the training part of it, but um, <laughs> 100 meter dash, 200. I enjoyed sports days, getting to do um, track and field. Football, my sister saying football, yes, mm -hmm. I, will still, I will do football recreationally. I don't right. see much do that like professionally or competitively, but I, I enjoy football for sure. You ran, you ran, um, you, did you, did you have any swim meets for, well, not swim meets, but for sports day? Did you dominate any, any sports day there? I did. Um, my teammates, my um, my schoolmates, my classmates would always call me wherever wherever I was in the school. They would come and find me to um, put me in all the track and field events. <laughs> Not but javelin. I don't know how to throw any of those things, but <laughs> you could do it. Um, but I always enjoy doing the the field events, um, the track events. Sorry, doing the the runs and. Um, I actually had to drop out of zonals one year. I was in high school and I was advancing through to towards nationals, um, like secondary school athletics. And right. um, it was coming up close to a swim competition. And I had to make a hard decision um, to, uh, to, to talk to my, my PE teacher and say, I can't go any further. Oh. And... Um, Another thing that happened too, I was, I started a, a girls football team at secondary school. And again, because of swimming, I had to um, play the role of the cheerleader supporter for my, mm. for my team that I got, that I started because um, I couldn't risk getting injured when I had competition coming up. Right. Um, did you by chance compete in convent um, sports day? And what was that like? I wasn't there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't last long enough at St. Joseph Convent. Was the time there long enough that you were in a house at least? I was in a house, um, but I don't think I even got to participate in anything. Oh. I, I, I guess I wasn't cut out for, for Convent. <laughs> nah, I figured out it was dominating in, in, in St. Stephen's. I sure Convent would have been a key piece of cake for you. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> the, um... so, so I have another question here. Uh, from the competitors that you mentioned earlier, I don't know if you could pull them back out again. Mm -hmm. But um, what, what uh, Jair wants to know, what sets you apart from them making you reach the level of an Olympian today? The only thing that set me apart is now my um, consistency, my my uh, my perseverance because i was not always um the top in my in my club um yes i won a couple um trophies but they were fast they were at least that were faster than me mm. when i when i was younger and again i don't even think that my coaches thought that i would be where i am today when i was younger uh so the only thing that set me apart from the rest of them is the perseverance. Perseverance? All right. We'll go with that. Because, you know, some people might be able, some people might be stopped that like think that they reach the peak and they stop. They don't have that. They, they, they don't seem to be able to break through the ceiling. But obviously you did. And we are thankful. And, you know, we're thankful, we're thankful for that. And we get to see you on the biggest athletic stage. Right. Um, so... What I want to ask is this too. Um, during the down period, that was you know when COVID hit and thing, right? What was the, you know, how did when when things started to slow down? What did you do to keep yourself, you know, keep yourself not bored, keep yourself interested? Any training, any extra training? Did you pick up any skills? 
you know, what, what, was, on, what was on TV? What, well, what, what was going on during that time? I went through a number of different cycles. I <laughs> was um, keeping myself busy with Netflix for good. Um, a large part of the first month or two month or two because mm-hmm. expecting this thing to to blow up let me enjoy my um my <laughs> I, nights were going into days were going into nights and rolling into each other i was staying up watching movies but um this was after the games were postponed and things were just looking worse and worse mm. and then um i decided to make better use of my time and i realized listen this time is a gift let me um not only um continue to work out and and stay fit in very um unique ways using plant pots and um water bottles and chairs and tables to to do my training Mm -hmm. but i took time to um got into the kitchen i i love cooking as i said before and i also really use the time to see how i could give back to the sport and how i could make an impact to help um support other athletes who may have gotten into the same stage that i did wanting to give up and i just began to think this pandemic is going to be a huge blow for our next Olympian. So mm-hmm. some other some other girl, some other guy might have considered the Olympic Games and decided and realized that this pandemic probably gonna set them back way too far and stop swimming altogether. And we have lost a couple. But I want to believe that um with the efforts that were made to reach out to athletes who have been rep- who have represented Trinidad and Tobago before and and um stopped their careers prematurely. I used the information there to guide the information that I would have put out through with the webinars and, and um programs that I had during the pandemic. So that's how I chose to use my time. Right. Uh, one other thing before we close off, because I think we're clo- running close to time. Right. Uh, by chance, do you teach swimming? Yes, I. Yes. When I, started, I do um, learn to swim. Aquasense, yes. Is it Aquasense? Aquasense Swim School is what mm-hmm. I found to um, introduce babies to the water as early as possible and um, for life-saving teach them life-saving skills as well for those who have home, um, homes with pools and um, who live really close to large bodies of water and how do you think your performance in the in the 50 meters coming up in the olympics how do you think that you know the credibility that the that credit that credibility i don't know if it will do anything else, else extra to say oh cheryl thompson is uh, not only just a, a natural at the swimming, but she also teaches swimming too. So maybe, who, who knows, maybe your child could come and become an it's Olympian a... swimmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there's no telling where the next, um, who the next Olympic Olympic athlete will be, the next Olympic medalist will be. But um, at the base level, the goal is to teach and introduce as many um, young ones as possible to the water because it's a life-saving skill. It's a life skill. Um, mm-hmm. It's a wonderful and fun sport. So that's the goal of Aquasense. That's good. That's great. That's great. Um, we have a question, a related question here from Kyron again. Um, he wants to know, can you spot natural talent in toddlers and babies? Or does it, 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 it you can't see from the reality from when they'll be from older? Um, not for competitive swimming, no. But mm-hmm. you may be able to see... If they have an affinity for swimming? Uh, yes, that has an affinity or like um, a greater aqua sense. That's what it's all about. A greater ah, ah. Um, <laughs> so they just have that natural body awareness um, in the water. And that's what it is about to be able to save themselves. I have to may have to work more with some, some babies than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some that I have worked with, they just float so easily. Um, and naturally, and they just have that um, 
comfort level with the water. Right. And I think we have one other question. It's from Jair once again. If you want to know, is your GoFundMe still active? Because I know, uh, I think it's because that, you know, there are a lot of athletes who are struggling in terms of the re- getting resources in order to go to the games. So um, is it still active? And how yeah. can we, how can we get you some? It is still active. Um, mm-hmm. Mission Unstoppable on the GoFundMe um, website is where you will be able to find it. And um, it was something I had to do as funding <laughs> was in very, very short supply um, with, the turn of, with the turn of the year for 2021. So it is Mission Unstoppable on GoFundMe.com. Come on, guys. Let's give her some. Let's give her those resources so she can be the best version of that she can be, right? And one other question before we go: uh, Miklasana wants to know uh, who is your favorite sister. Let's close off with that very hard one. Yeah. Um, no comment. <laughs> I have <laughs> and this is what we do with each other whenever any of us go live. We always have to. Um, you always have to make some, put some um, comments like that in the chat <laughs> for everybody to know how wild and crazy we are. But yeah. I love. Yeah, Kapo, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah, you can't really um, you know, family, family strong. So um, um, it's, it's like um, Shana putting some eyes there. She want, like she like she might be the favorite. <laughs> If I may, I do want to say, I know we're getting ready to close, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm go ahead. representing um, Trinidad and Tobago. I'll be representing uh, my family. There are some, some teas that I, that I realize have um, come up along the way in my Olympic journey. And my family, Thompson family, I am so grateful to them for their support, both um, as a young girl and even now. And um, so that's the first T, Thompson family, Trinidad and Tobago, at large, my church family, my um, club, Eagles Aquatics, the um, swimming fraternity who have who has been showing a lot of support in the recent months and um my alma mater tennessee university of tennessee has played a, an integral role in my journey as well and leading up to to the olympic games and as i said in opening i represent jesus christ so that cross is another t that i will be swimming for and representing when I go behind the block. So I just want to say thank you to each and every person who has contributed and played a role in um in getting me where I am today. And um I am my heart is really full and I am just excited and ready to go when I get to to Japan. Um I'll be behind that block just like an engine revved up and ready to race and to do my best for every single person. All right, Sherelle, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you having the show. Big up to you, to the family, and as well to all our to all our Olympians getting ready for the Olymp- getting ready for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. It's mm-hmm. gonna be a weird setting with no with no, with no fans there, but we still wish you and everybody else nothing but the best. Thank Can you like- for joining us with this interview, and we hope to see you again. And we will get once again. We're going for gold. Thanks. All right, Thank you it. so much, uh, Sherelle. See you later. So, guys, that was Sherelle Thompson. That was Sherelle Thompson. Almost quit the live there. <laughs> Too quick. 50-meter um, freestyle swimmer. Getting ready to go to Japan within the next couple of weeks, couple of days. So, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, great discussion, great talk, great interview with Sherelle. Um, shout out to the, the Thompson family, making the live a little bit vibesy as well. Shout out to all the, the viewers as well. And before we close off, just want to give a quick shout out to, you know, all the healthcare workers, everybody out there who's facing this pandemic. Make sure you wear a mask, get vaccinated. Um, you know, follow all the health and safety protocols. Make sure you keep seat seat away. 
And once again, to all our athletes going to, to Tokyo, be safe and do your best. And let's bring home a couple of medals for Trinidad and Tobago, all right? So once again, before we close off, thank you, everybody. On behalf of Tosun Sport, my name is Yannick Quintal. We are signing off. Thank you and good night.